This video will walk you through how to use the One Mean ISI applets. Have the STAT216 homepage open, not D2L, but the actual STAT216 homepage, as well as the ISI applets, so you can follow along. The data we will analyze for this example was discussed in the bootstrapping supplement available to you on D2L and on the STAT216 homepage. It includes data on the recorded arsenic concentrations from private wells in New Hampshire. Trace amounts of arsenic are found in groundwater, but arsenic concentrations above 0.15 parts per million are considered hazardous to humans. The state is investigating whether the groundwater in New Hampshire has hazardous levels of arsenic. Therefore, the null hypothesis here is that the mean arsenic concentration of the toenail clippings for those using private wells in New Hampshire is 0.15. The alternative would be, would be that the mean arsenic levels are above 0.15. First, we need to load the data. So, from our STAT216 homepage, we can click the link for data sets, and then we're investigating the arsenic levels in New Hampshire wells, so we'll click the link for that data set. Highlight the entire data set, including the header arsenic, copy the data, then in our ISI applets, go to one mean, and remember we want to bootstrap, so we need to click on the bootstrapping link in order to get to the correct applet. So the header for your applet should say one variable bootstrapping. We're going to clear out the preloaded data and paste in ours and click use data. Now we can explore the data. We can see that we have a sample size of 19 a mean of 0.272, or x bar is equal to 0.272, a standard deviation of 0.237, or s equals 0.237, and a fairly right skewed distribution. Now, to simulate these data, remember that we need to make the mean of the data, which was 0.272, equal to the null value, or 0.15. Taking the null value minus the mean, we get a value of negative 0.122. In other words, we need to subtract 0.122 from each arsenic concentration that we have in order to make the mean of the shifted data equal to the null value. Then, we will use bootstrapping, or sampling with replacement, 19 times our sample size from this shifted data set and plot the mean of each bootstrap resample in order to create our simulated null distribution. Okay, let's use the applet to do this. First, we need to shift the data based on the difference between the null value and the sample mean. I can click on this orange number and change it to my desired shift of negative 0.122. Now the null value, which is what we wanted, but the standard deviation has not changed, which is also what we want. Bootstrapping is used to estimate sampling variability, so we need to keep the variability in our original sample the same. Now to actually conduct the bootstrapping, click Show Sampling Options. Change the number of samples to 1,000 or more, and the sample size needs to match the original sample size, 19. Click Draw Samples. If you'd like, you can pull down this drop-down menu and so you can see which observational units were selected for the resample. For example, you can see observational unit 1 was selected twice here, and 2 and 3 were selected, but I don't see 4 or 5 selected at all in the resample, which is what we expect because we've sampled with replacement. This most recent sample plot shows the distribution of the most recent resample. Notice that the values here are actually the shifted values, and so we get some arsenic concentrations below zero, which we did not have in our original data. Finally, the rightmost plot shows the null distribution, or a plot of the sample means, the statistics, from each of our resamples. How do we calculate the p-value from this null distribution? The same as always. 
we select the direction to count based off the alternative hypothesis. Here, the alternative hypothesis was that mu was greater than 0.15, so I'm going to choose greater than in my count samples box. And then I'm going to type in my observed sample mean, which was 0.272, and click count. We see here that 20 samples are selected in red, which meant 20 of our bootstrap resamples had a mean of 0.272 or higher, where each bootstrap resample assumed the null hypothesis of mu is equal to 0.15. In other words, the p-value for this test is 0.02. Note that if the validity conditions are met, we could also use the theory-based inference applet to analyze these data. We need to change the scenario to one mean, since we are working with a single quantitative variable, enter in the sample size, 19, the sample mean, 0.272, and the sample standard deviation, 0.237. Note if you didn't have these values already calculated, you could also just copy the data directly into the applet using the paste data button. We could clear this data, paste in our current arsenic data, and click use data. Now we just need to do a test of significance, change to the desired null value of 0.15, and change the sign of the alternative to match our research hypothesis. In this case, that mu was greater than 0.15, and then we can click Calculate. Our p-value here is 0.0188, relatively close to the simulation p-value of 0.20. Note that for these data, the validity conditions actually are not met. We have a strongly right-skewed distribution in our sample and a sample size lower than 19. Note that the interpretation of a p-value and how to write a conclusion have not changed from a single proportion test. Because validity conditions were not met, we will use the simulation p-value here, which was 0.02. So we would state that there is a 2% chance of seeing a sample mean arsenic concentration of the sample mean 0.272 parts per million or higher if the true mean arsenic concentrations and toenails of people with private wells in New Hampshire is the null value 0.15. Another way of stating that same p-value interpretation would be to say we would expect to see a sample mean arsenic concentration of 0.272 parts per million or higher in about 20 of 1,000 samples, where each sample was simulated assuming the mean arsenic concentrations of toenails of all New Hampshire residents with private wells is 0.15. As a conclusion, we need to give our strength of evidence and write the conclusion in terms of the alternative hypothesis, that is, we have strong evidence that the mean arsenic concentrations in toenails of the population of New Hampshire residents with private wells is at a hazardous level above 0.15.